Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Castro Devin. Welcome to our Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot, the first one of the entire gaming Crash Saga. So, <laughs> gaming Crash? No, what am I talking about? The Crash Bandicoot Saga. So, I'm gonna just do nothing for a little bit. And I'll let you guys see the intro of the game before we actually get started. Voices actually seem kind of weird compared to the other games like Crash 2 and Crash 3. <laughs> really weird. Well, anyways, guys, welcome to the first Crash Bandicoot. So let's get started, shall we? And of course, we'll start off with the first level, the ever famous Insanity Beach. Now, this is where uh, Crash falls from the top of Cortex's castle. So, uh,. This is where we end up in, with his nose stuck in the sand. Yeah, let's do it. So, this is the game that started it all right here. Started all the entire Crash Bandicoot series. And in my personal opinion, it's uh, going to be kind of excruciating going through this game, because uh, I've already done a playthrough of this when I used to have the Rock Shell game capture. It was quite excruciating, believe me, because... Some of the levels in this game are really annoying, to say the least. And because one little... I always make one little mistake almost every single time on those hard levels, so I'm there's a good chance that I might actually have to experience that excruciating... excruciating suffering, I might say. Good chance that I will. But of course we got this little uh, standard level, so this will be no problem. Now I'm not really sure about the box, how many boxes there are, I haven't actually been counting actually, but I mean, I should look up on Crash Bandicoot Wiki, so uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if they even do the box counter in this game. But anyway, this is the back section of Insanity Beach, and I gotta tell you, this, the music in this part is actually really good, it's probably one of my favorite songs in this game. And that's really, that's... That was really a box right behind that little ledge, so you do you don't want to miss it. I just love this music. This is so good. It's so good, it's amazing. And here comes the hard part of this level. This part, I hate this part. Okay, so I'm going to try to concentrate. Concentrate. Okay, oh, I hate that part. Oh. Sorry, I get always, I kind of get, still get, I still get kind of worked up on that part even to this day. Oh, it, that is annoying. But anyway, we got our first gem. Ta da! Ta -da! Uh, let's see if I have enough space to make a save file. I do not. So that means I'm gonna have to switch slots. Uh, why not? I'll just do it on this one, since it's got the space. Just gotta remember to go put it back on slot 6, because slot 6 I was using for my Digimon World 3 playthrough. So I gotta remember to switch it back. Uh, it's not that much uh, uh, on here, so we'll just save it right here. At least get a save file going. Alright, we are good to go. And this game's gonna have a lot of backtracking, so believe me. Because there are a lot of these levels here at the start that we won't get a gem on. Uh, for now, anyway. 
Uh, next level is Jungle Rollers. I know for a fact that we won't get the gem on this level because we're going to need a gem from a later level in order to, get, to come back here and get the gem. So, like I said, there's a lot of backtracking in this game. And even though I actually do love like this game, but I, I still think of it as like as one of the hardest crash games to get all everything on. Because believe like I said, it was pretty excruciating trying to get everything in this game. Uh, I didn't get caught up in it, so. Let me see if I can do it again with this one. It's it's a little funny thing that you can do when you have the Aku Aku mask. Oh boy, get over. <laughs> oh, it's this one right here. It's this one. <laughs> I always thought that part was so, so hilarious. I think of that part as like one of the most hilarious moments ever in this game. Get out of here, you stupid skunk. Hey, I, oh, I actually got that life without even trying to break it, but yeah, there's that life, uh, life crate between two TNT boxes. I was going to try to spin it so I can try to keep my elite skills and trying to get boxes without even touching a TNT. So uh, apparently I failed at that. Did not even get the chance to do that. Oh well, there's always next time. And he, these are the bonus rounds. And in case you don't know who the uh, uh, female Bandicoot's character's name is, it's uh, Tana Bandicoot. Basically, Tana is basically Crash's girlfriend. And this is the only game that Tana is uh, basically that she's in. But she she does make like a appearance in like a photo and like in Wrath of Cortex and some of the other later games. But actual appearance, this is the only game that she appears in. They probably should use her more. They probably should uh, bring her back in the... Uh, if they ever re revive Crash, they should bring her back. I mean, it's like... What's the purpose of... I mean, she's not even dead, so... Why not bring her back? You know what I mean? She's not even dead, per se. Oh, boy. Oh, that was close right there. But anyway if, you, anyway, if you remember from earlier in the level, if you saw a little green circle, that means it's a, a green gem. So we're going to need the uh, green gem to get like a green, kind of like how the gem paths work in the later games. We're going to need the green gem to access the green gem path to be able to get all the other boxes that we missed. So we missed three boxes. So, And they were on way up top of where that green gem was. So it's going to be a little bit later until we can come back to this level to get the gem. Alright, next level is the Great Gate. I know for a fact this is another level that we're gonna have to backtrack on. It's gonna be much later in the game to get to get the gem. Ah, this game is just so memorable for childhood. And I'm not gonna be able to get it. Rats. Maybe I can reach it? Nah, I can't. Let me get to the very edge. Let me try and get to the very edge of this turtle so I can try to reach it. I'm not going to reach it. Oh well. Oh well, I'll be able to get another one later. Boom! Stupid monkey. Get out of here. Oh boy! Oh, that was close right there. That was so close. He almost bit me. Ah, I just love this music. It's so catchy. Well, anyway, here's an Aku Aku mask, so make up for the one that I missed. Yeah, don't forget that. And I hate those right there, those guys with the little shield that come running towards you. Boom! Get out of here. Oh, I can make it through that. Oh boy, that was pretty close. Avoiding the fire like that. Bonus round, Tana bonus round that is. Time to get a headache. Yeah. We've already got 18 lives. It's amazing how many lives that we can get at this point. 20, I mean. <laughs> I've 
pardon me, I meant 20. And look at that, we're already at 7% complete. It doesn't seem like 7%. But hey, I'll take it. I definitely will take it. Wow, I'm amazing. And those are the yellow gem paths, so uh, we won't be able to go over the uh, end of the level. And I know for a fact that the yellow gem is the last color gem, so it's a really, really late in the game. Alrighty, next up is boulders. Now I know we can get the gem on here. But I used, I used to be annoyed by these these uh, boulder chasing levels, at least in this game, because in Crash Bandicoot 2 they're not they're not too bad, because you can actually run a like at a faster pace away from the boulder. But in this game, the boulder is actually slightly faster than you, so it's best that you try to at least spin as much as you as much as you can when you when you can, so you can at least be able to get a pretty good distance away from the boulder. Because if you just try to run it, you're gonna there's a good chance that you might get crushed. So believe me. The boulder's actually a tad faster than Crash in this game. Just a little bit, though. So if you can, try to use the spin as much as you can. For in this game, it actually makes Crash go a bit faster. So I'm able to keep a pretty good distance away from it. Oh, and the thing is about why I think that this game is pretty excruciating, because the thing is that... In order to be able to get the gem, you cannot die after you touch a checkpoint. However, if you die without touching, like, say at the start of the level without touching a checkpoint, then you'll be fine. Then you can go through the whole level and try to get the gem, no problem. But that only happens after you touch a checkpoint. Oh, that boulder's getting pretty close. <laughs> but yeah, it's best that you uh, try to use the spin as much as you can so you can keep a safe distance away from it. Nine percent. Only got two gems so far, so I think I'd do one more level. One more level, and I'll uh, call this apart. Next up is upstream. Now, I know we can't get the uh, gem on here, because, like I said, backtracking. A lot of these levels here at the start, you require backtracking. Go on, invincible. Stinking fish. These fish used to annoy me. I remember the glory days of the PlayStation, like when, uh, basically when Mark Cerny was, uh, involved in game producing, because. He's basically my inspiration in terms of game producing, because he he was what made games really good. Like for instance, he helped in the development of Crash Bandicoot's one and one through three, and Spyro's one through three. So basically, he was there during the glory days, the glory days, glory days of the video gaming. And those are the orange gem paths. Basically, this is the only game that has the orange gem in it. And uh, the silly thing is, if you uh, get a uh, uh, Bitten by the blue piranha plant, even when you're invincible, you'll die, so... And it's like you can't even kill those piranha plants. Pretty stupid, pretty stupid in my opinion. It's like how the invincibility works in Twin Sanity. If you get hit by something, you'll die anyway. Even if you just run right toward, right for it, run right through it, it's pretty stupid. Pretty stupid in my opinion. 13% complete. We are on a... Call me butter, because we're on a roll. Well, I am. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong, that's wrong pronunciation. Call me butter, because I'm on a roll. I probably shouldn't jinx that, because I don't want to accidentally overshoot a jump. Or die. But oh well, here's the end of the level. And here's some more orange gym paths. So there are two uh, places that we can't reach in this level. <clears throat> So, I'm, I'll be able to do this next one, because this one won't take very long. Here, Here's our first boss fight. Papu Papu. Now, Papu Papu can be one of the 
quickest boss fights in my opinion. In my opinion, he's one of the quickest boss fights ever. Oh, I barely missed that. I don't see how he could how he touched me right there. Bam! Maybe I touched his stick. Or his, yeah, his stick. Maybe that's what I touched. But I will go at least through... Actually, no, I'll stop it right here. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this first part of our Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot. And I will see you guys in the next one. I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.